Hello and welcome! Now today I'm going to review the Super SD System 3 by Terra Onion for the lovely little PC engine. Now this has been sent to me for review by Terra Onion themselves, however the opinions are my own based on my experience and of setting this up and using it. So let's get into it and open it because I'm excited about it. <laughs> this seems, this is the, you'd call it the ultimate tool of the PC Engine. Now this is compatible with the PC Engine, the Core Graphics, Core Graphics 2 and I believe Super Graphics. You get an instruction manual and you get the, the unit itself, nice and simple. Now this is a system which basically connects to the back, the back port here of your PC Engine or Core Graphics machines, like this. It's quite easy, it's just like a port that you snub on. Kind of makes it look like it's wearing a helmet now. <laughs> By the way, if you wish to watch my previous PC Engine video, the link is in the description below as well as the letter I in the top hand corner, top right hand corner. <laughs> Now this is the quick user guide and instruction manual. It is quite simple to follow, to be honest. Uh, the unit is simple itself in nature. It tells you exactly what files you need. The PCE files, the standard two card files. And for the CD, it will be .q.bin. Now after the last video, I did get asked a few times, you know, why I removed the RGB mod and if it was absolutely necessary to remove the RGB mod. I mean, it's not necessary, but Come on, it's like a framebook cable hanging out. I don't want a freaking Nyan engine. Now, RGB output is not the only option you have. You actually have the option of composite output if you need that. And, um, you know, it all depends on which cable you get. Now that you have a micro SD card slot here, which you can put your files onto. Now, one thing I must mention about this is that I'm very impressed with the quality of this. I'm very picky about plastics. And, uh, you know, I'm, <laughs> it just, a lot of them can seem cheap and brittle to me. This definitely, no, the plastic is not the brittle type. It's actually a very good quality plastic. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm happy with how it looks. And, I mean, when you connect it to this, to the actual PC engine, yeah, sure, it does, you know, add a significant size to it, I have to say. However, if you consider the size of the original CD unit that you used to get with this, you know, it is actually pretty good. I mean, considering that it does everything. Now, as you can see here, inside there is a nice, interesting and funky looking circuit board. And uh, you will notice that it has a lattice uh, FPGA. Now, completely taking this out, you can see here that it is very nicely made. Quality as you would expect from this price. So the price for this was 260 euros, which is around 230 UK pounds and 300 US dollars. Though that seemed a little bit steep to me, though they have since revised the price to 240 euros which is around 215 UK pounds and 280 US dollars. Now this seems more reasonable to me. And yes, I do love the 80s retro inspired box art for this. <laughs> but this is compatible with PC Engine, Core Graphics 1 and 2 and the Super Graphics. However, it doesn't mention anything about the Turbo Graphics 16. However, I can confirm that this does work on the Turbo Graphics 16. It is FPGA, therefore, as I said, running exactly as the original would, if not better. And there is no emulation. I feel strongly about this. Yes, <laughs> you will know that after, if you've watched my Amiga Vampire video. Now, for as I said, for what it is and what it does, it is absolutely worth it. Now, there is something which I must mention. In the earlier boards, there was a tantalum capacitor that was soldered in the wrong way. Uh, this one in particular. And it seems to be now corrected. It is pretty much the ultimate 2 plus of the PC Engine world. Now, to take advantage of the RGB output on here, you would need a Sega Mega Drive 2 or a Sega Genesis 2 high quality RGB cable. And this includes full stereo audio. 
Now the micro SD card on this must be formatted either FAT32 or XFAT. I'm getting all my <laughs> card collection out here. And it supports maximum of 256 gigabytes, which I have to say is quite a lot of games. <laughs> Now, one thing which I'm very thankful for is that this does not require any external power. It is powered by the PC Engine itself. And I'm so grateful for this because I do not have any plug points left. <laughs> now, let's stick this over to my retro corner and let's have some fun with it because I've been waiting. <laughs> okay, so coming across a bit of an issue here. When I turn the, um, I've connected the SSD S3 there. When I turn this on, all I get is a green screen on both displays, on the PVM and the, uh, you know, on the both connected RGB. Uh, that one's through the upscaler. Of course, when I put the SD, I mean, I know it shouldn't go green anyway, even without an SD card. Then we'll put the SD card in here. Okay, one thing I have to say is that the insertion and removal of the SD card is not easy, even for someone with long nails like me. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a little bit tough. I'm not sure how somebody without long nails would actually, but I'm still getting the green screen. Yet, if I were to put a hue card in, you know, it comes up. Okay, I just spoke to Todd from Todd's Nerd Cave about this. Uh, he is a member of Terra Onion and he pointed me to a thread where somebody else was having the same issue. Now, on the thread, somebody had mentioned that um, when you have a board like this without the shielding, uh, not all the grounds are connected. Like, for example, you have, um, so you have these two parts here, this point and this point, they actually need ground and they are not actually connected to ground. So let me just test them with a meter. Okay. There needs to be a ground connection, but there's no ground connection between this and this, which normally the shielding would have, you know, dealt with. Let's check the others. Anyways, let's connect this to ground. If you just connect one of them to ground, they're both connected to each other. If you connect one of these to ground, it should be fine. Now, if you're at the point where you do have shielding and it still does this green screen thing, uh, do check the pins at the back to see if any of them are, you know, bent or anything like this. And do a contact clean with like a contact cleaner like Dioxid or something like this. Okay, now the moment of truth. I have connected everything up. These work. Is that working? <gasps> it's working! Yes, it's working! <laughs> Sorry. Oh, thank God, I was worried. I thought something screwed up. So one thing I've noticed when trying this out is that the screen is stupidly bright. And that is the fault of the cable itself. Now, when you get a cable for this, uh, a Genesis 2 or a Mega Drive 2 cable for this, RGB one, you need to have, a, you need to get a good quality one with the 75 ohm resistors on each of the RGB terminals. Uh, the one which I got is from eBay simply because uh, Retro Computer Shack was closed and I really needed one and he's closed until the 13th. Okay, so just like a quick little adjustment here. So what I basically need to do is just remove this blue, green and orange wire and add in these resistors to each in series. And this is a 55 ohm resistor. You actually need a 75 ohm resistor. But this is the closest I have. I need to stock up on more resistors, actually. So basically, it'll still be like a touch, just a touch brighter than it should be, but it'll be way better than it is now. So, you know, it's not so bad then. Just do them one at a time. You can hear a few of them on Discord, on my channel, talking about shoot em ups. <laughs> the Amiga. <laughs> it's a hot topic, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and so I'm really happy that it's beautiful and sunny today, so I don't have to worry about lighting so much. There we go, and we're done. That should be at a much better brightness level. As I said, I will be 
getting a better cable, a better quality cable later on. Okay, that should be done now. Just need to close this up, test it out, and hopefully it should work. Okay, so the first thing you will need to do on your computer is format a micro SD card as FAT32 or XFAT. I have chosen XFAT. And this, I find, is the best way to arrange your files on the SD card. You have a folder for BIOS files, which are actually the CD-ROM system cards. More about those later. You have the CD-ROM folder with all your games in. Note each game has its own folder with a .bin and a .q file in. Then you have a Hue card folder with all your Hue card games in it. You can also play US TurboGrafx-16 games on this too, whether CD or Turbo chip cards. And you just insert your micro SD card in there. Turn your PC engine on. And you're set. However, I must say this, that the manual states to never remove or insert the SD card while the system is on. So we are now in my retro corner or my retro alcove that it's becoming now. <laughs> and we are going to test the Super SD System 3. Right, so when you first turn your PC engine on, you will notice the screen here. Now this is the menu screen, and uh, basically that's all your all that's on your SD card or my SD card. Uh, let's go to the options and sort that out. Now you will notice that this first option here, boot the last game, is selected. I don't know why it's selected, I would highly recommend deselecting that, um, because what that does, basically, is when you load a hue card and you then you know play the game and so forth and then you turn off your system and then on again it will load that same hue card up you know treating it as if it's permanently in there so yeah you will not be able to get back to this menu system unless you take your sd card out put it in your computer and then delete the file on the root which is lastpce.config and you know then you plug it you insert your SD card here again and then this menu will come up. So I'm not sure why this is by default on, I would highly recommend switching it off. Uh, you have the other options here, uh, CD block volume, uh, select CD, CD-ROM system card. In the original PC Engine CD-ROM setup, what you needed was um, system cards, like uh, they came in three main versions, like version 1, 2 and 3, but with like 1.1 or 2.1 in between. Um, I would highly recommend version 3 because uh, it, that will run most games. Why is it version 2? Why? I need to set it to version 3. See, this is the thing. I wish this text was a little smaller. I'm assuming that's version 3, so I have selected. Now at the top, you can see hue cards and CD ROMs. Now, if you select, press select. You can select between them. Now, of course, if you want to use, if you want to load hue card games, you go to the hue cards tab, and then you go into the hue cards folder here. And the basic, you know, up and down is just selecting, you know, scrolling up and down. However, if you notice, if you have a huge collection of hue cards, it's, you're gonna struggle getting to freaking, you know, P or Y or something like this. So what you do is left and right um, scrolls up and down the page. So you know, it's a little quicker. You know, one thing I have to say is the font and the look isn't, you know, it's not the easiest and most comfortable for me. First of all, I wish that this had a bit more colors, like I wish the folders were different colors. Uh, it just all seems to be, and especially the, the selection, you can see the selection going up and down. I wish that was like highlighted red or some, some color that's different, that, that doesn't seem to be very much of a color scheme. Actually, I wish there was more of an option. Uh, for skins, different skins or different themes, uh, because I do struggle <laughs> reading and seeing this. Um, me personally, I have dyslexia and something called uh, Erlen syndrome, which is like a photosensitivity. Now, this isn't so bad, even though it's not entirely comfortable. But when I, you know, when I'm looking at websites and I come across a website that is full white, bright text, and um, black background the blackest you can get i actually cannot see white text on black background it's just my i cannot see it uh, and if i do try 
it strains, it severely strains my eyes. Uh, this isn't so bad because this is not fully white. It's kind of like a creamish kind of color, um, off-white color. So it's still stressful, but it's not so bad I can actually see it. And you just, you know, select it and press start. It loads the hue card. Why is Bung or PC, PC Kid very red in this? Now the reason why I've loaded this is because there was some artifact thing happening in the background due to some RGB, you could see diagonal lines. Now if I look closely I can see subtle diagonal lines that appear every now and then, but it's not so bad. You can every now and then, it does flicker on and off, but... They're not that permanent, it's actually fine. It's a really nice version. Why is it, is it me? Or does everything seem a bit too red? The the red seems a bit strong. Maybe it's the game. Because look at that plant. Red is very saturated. Stupid thing! <laughs> Purple one. <gasps> Hi. This is so tiny. Yay. I love this on the Amiga. I love it. This too, actually. It's nice. And this has the second part and the third. One thing which I'm noticing is that it is a bit red, so I want to, um, you know, load a game which I'm familiar with. That's one another thing which I really wish the SSD S3 had is a reset switch, reset button, because you know rather than switching it off and on, it'd be really nice for it to have a reset button. Yeah, that screen looks familiar. Notice the stereo sound. The red seems fine. Red doesn't seem saturated in this game, it's just the game. Also, bear in mind, you may see some artifacting, but I'm trying a... I've got 50 ohm resistors in this, so it is a touch brighter than it should be. No. Stupid freaking castanet! Hold it like this, because I'm not used to oh, Castanet. Yeah. It's bugging me now. I want to know what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, I'm also using 50 ohm resistors. So this is a bit brighter than it should be. Uh, just a touch. There should be 75 ohm resistors, but I'm using 50 ohm because I just don't have a 75 ohm. Um, so maybe that's like causing some artifact thing to appear. It's triangle level, freaking notice. Too well. There's an angry triangle here. You know what I'm doing, don't you? Those of you, those of you who know me will know what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna hear the boss music. That copy of Kaoma's Lambada. I just wanna hear it. What it's like in this version. Harder to control because it's two separate buttons for I'm so used to the Amiga one. But this is a really nice version. <gasps> yes. I need to do a proper game! <laughs> By the way, if you wish to see my gameplay of this on the Amiga, uh, the link is in the description below as well as in the letter I in the top corner. Oh, this is where I get the miracle thing. These freaking ah no! These stupid freaking Kermits. These pseudo Kermits. Stupid freaking pseudo My Little Pony. 
Here's the televisions. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> I thought I was gonna die. Miracle, I got three televisions. Ooh, big cake things. Ah, ah, more? That's it. Because it disappears so quick. That's so darn it. That is so satisfying. <laughs> Normally in the Amiga version, they, they become freaking drunk when you just like walk into them and you've got something. Oh, no, little jelly dot. Move far away. Oh, angry jelly dot. <laughs> angry suit on my little pony. <laughs> this is hard. This is hard. PC engine. My god. This is so hard! Ah, ah, ah. How? How? No. Yeah, let's play another game. Huh? No! See, this is what's happened! Did I accidentally press that option? This is what happens when you uh, do the boot select boot thing. It now is thinking this freaking permanently parasol stars is in. So now it comes up. Now get her that stupid option. See? So what I was showing you. I think I must have left it on. <laughs> okay, let's play a CD-ROM game. I'm curious about Prince of Persia. Works. CD sound. You're on an 8... You're playing on an 8-bit system. Does it feel like it? No. I can't believe I'm... I mean, it's 16-bit graphics. But 8-bit CPU, it's crazy. This is a nice version. Actually, um, Robert. Ah! <laughs> Does got strong, strong pull of gravity. This is recommended to me by my friend Robert Menes, and uh, yeah, I have to say it's a good version. No. Ah! Darn it! We did it again! Because I'm not used to the freaking buttons! I have to think about which button to press! How'd you do it? How'd you pick up the sword? Oh, can you not just pick up the sword in this version? Yes, just like pummel everyone. <laughs> How'd you pick up the darn sword? No! How do I get out of this? Get me out of this! Okay. You just press the freaky button without squatting down! Prince look like an idiot, just like squatting constantly. Ah! Just press the wrong button. Well, that's Prince of Persia, and it's on CD. Let's try, let's try another CD game. Lemmings. I am curious about that. Hi. What's that weird crackling sound in this side? This has been... <laughs> this is the music from the Amiga version being sampled onto the CD. How do you change the... Oh, okay, you press Y, press button on that. But you know something? It doesn't matter how good another port is. Lemmings is just best on the Amiga. It's just... The music is different, as in, you know, I know the levels from their music, that's why, and this is just different. I wanna play the Amiga version. <laughs> no, different. Different music. <laughs> it looks 
drunken. Isn't that the best rendition of this tune? <laughs> it's very... They could've done a little better, I think. Whoa, the gameplay is very fast. Ah! Ah! The energy is not forgiving whatsoever! Open fire! Not that good, but... for me. <laughs> ah. I am so impressed with this system. Sorry, oh. but I am. Come on, this is 8-bit. You're kidding me. Ooh, nice. Got some nice power. Darn it. Okay. Ooh! No! Let's try one more game, and that is just for the music. You can guess what it is. This is 8 bit, dudes! <laughs> I actually really like the PC Engine soundtrack to this. The PC Engine CD soundtrack to this. It's just wow. I'm not good at this game. I'm just so hard. Look at this feels a little easier. In the Amiga version. At the same time, it doesn't. <laughs> What was that? What killed me? Nothing! The tree! Oh, that's so nice! I don't even want to go in somewhere. I'm sorry, I'm listening to the music. It feels like 80s uh, synthesizer CDs. Yeah, it does. 80s synthesizer CDs. Oh my god, this is so nice. I'm just gonna make a CD of this. What a compilation is record this. I love this. Hey, dude. Patting back is freaking. My tune. My hero. Do it 
fly. It's made a little easier on the Omega, on the um, PC engine, I'm just saying, because... What the? Okay. On the Amiga version, you have to get it exact. This is my favorite Shadow of the Beast um, music. Where did it just take me? It's terrible. But you know something? I only ever play Outrun for a musical sound char. This music here. It's just... This music is the reason why I ever load Outrun on any platform. <laughs> conclude my review of the Super SD System 3. I have to say that all in all I highly recommend it. It is just... it's not only you know you put your entire Hue card library on it. It gives you the experience of CD and there's some really good audio tracks on this and there's more for me to explore. I'm aware of that. But yeah definitely I have to recommend the SD, SSD S3. It's just fantastic. It the CD audio just gives the games that much depth. I mean, there's like a few things here and there, little things like, um, you know, I'd like a reset button, and uh, you know, I'd like a few different skins so the front looks different, you know, so forth. There's things like that, but you know, I mean, minor compared to, you know, what advantages it has. You know, it's just, it's amazing. So, yeah, if you're considering getting one, it is something worth saving up for. If you're into the PC engine, it is definitely something worth saving up for. I mean, you get um, an RGB out as well, which works fantastic. So yeah, that is my conclusion of this. And I am a proud owner of an SSD S3. Now I want to play more games. So, if you excuse me, I will say thank you so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. For now, I will say adios. <laughs> for the generous donations, I would like to say a big thank you to my patrons. And if you wish to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below as well as links to my Patreon's websites for YouTube channel.